Hey everybody and welcome to Long Story Short with Uncle Jeff. Today we will be continuing in the exciting story of the Gatewatch. It's time for Eldritch Moon. When we last left Innistrad, Soren had just killed Avacyn. The plane is now defenseless. But who caused Avacyn's madness in the first place? Once more, we must travel back in time to when the three planeswalkers first trapped the Eldrazi. Ugin and Soren left Zendikar to go their separate ways, but Nahiri stayed. She slept in stone for thousands of years until an alarm woke her. Somehow, the Eldrazi had broken free. Nahiri called for her allies, but there was no response. She had to trap the Eldrazi alone. Nahiri worked hard and eventually succeeded in restoring their prison. Unfortunately, the Eldrazi had already destroyed much of Zendikar. Then, Nahiri went to Innistrad to find out what happened to Soren. She finds Soren standing next to his new creation, the Hell Vault. He seems uninterested in Nahiri's arrival. Nahiri asks him why he did not answer her call. Soren observes that his new defenses must have prevented him from hearing it, but he doesn't seem to care. Nahiri is angry that Soren shows so little regard for her Zendikar. She demands he return with her to make sure the Eldrazi cannot escape. Soren refuses. Nahiri attacks him, hoping to show how serious she is. But Soren doesn't care. He simply traps Nahiri in the Hell Vault and leaves. Nahiri spends her time in the Hell Vault plotting her revenge. After a thousand years, she finally gets her chance. The Hell Vault is destroyed, and Nahiri is free. She returns to Zendikar to find it under attack. Ulamog is free and consuming everything. The Hedrons are in disarray, and no one has come to Zendikar's aid. Nahiri concludes that Zendikar is lost, so she returns to Innistrad. If her plane is to be destroyed by the Eldrazi, then so will Soren's. She builds the Cryptoliths. They aren't quite as elegant as her Hedrons, but they will do. The Cryptoliths direct all the mana of Innistrad to the Drownyard, and there she summons Emrakul. But Emrakul cannot enter Innistrad. Avacyn protects it. Nahiri needs to destroy her. Fortunately, Avacyn is an angel, and angels are beings of pure mana, mana that can be directed by the Cryptoliths. So Avacyn goes mad. Soren is forced to kill her, and Emrakul arrives on Innistrad. The effects of her arrival are instant. Countless humans are brought under her influence and become her cultists, but they do not remain human for long, and Rukul brings new life from the old. Some creatures are melded together into new creations. Entire towns rise up and serve the new lord of Innistrad. In the distance, Tamio and Jace watch. Jace's investigation is complete. The final titan has been found. He leaves to summon the rest of the Gatewatch. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Liliana is hanging out with Olivia Valderin. Soren is there too, and he's pretty angry. He has given up on saving Innistrad, but he does intend to get some revenge, so Soren and Olivia march off to kill Nahiri. They invite Liliana to join them, but she refuses. Liliana prepares to leave Innistrad. But then she thinks of Jace, alone, and probably about to die. She assumes that Jace is still in Thraben, which is exactly where Emrakul is headed, and she just can't bring herself to leave. So she raises an army of zombies and marches to Thraben. In the meantime, Soren and Olivia have found Nahiri. She has an army of cultists, and there is a big battle. Soren and Nahiri face off, and the fight seems evenly matched. But Nahiri gains the upper hand and manages to trap Soren in a wall. She leaves him there so he can watch Innistrad die. Meanwhile in Thraben, Thalia has come to save the city. A monstrous angel shows up, leading the Eldrazi. It is made of Bruna and Gisela, two of Avacyn's archangels. Thalia leads the Cathars, wielding Avacyn's moon silver spear. Brazella is fearsome and too much for Thalia, but then Sigarda shows up. Sigarda is the only angel left defending humanity, and with the help of Thalia, she destroys Brazella. Meanwhile, in another part of the city, the Gatewatch is trying to defeat Emrakul. They attempt to kill her in the same way they defeated Ulamog and Kozilek, but Nissa is only able to find a few ley lines. The rest of the mana is either flowing somewhere else or so corrupted that Nissa cannot use it. Still, Chandra wants to give it a shot. They prepare to destroy the Titan, but are overwhelmed by Eldrazi. It seems like the end, but a bunch of zombies show up. Liliana leads an assault against the otherworldly invaders. The Raven Man is still pestering her these days, and once again he tries to convince her not to do what she is about to do. But Liliana has had enough of him and continues her assault. It soon becomes obvious that Emrakul cannot be beaten by a horde of zombies, and yet, Liliana continues. She would rather die than be ordered around. In the meantime, Jace is still trying to keep the Gatewatch together. A wave of madness causes everyone to lose touch with reality. Jace sees things in each of his companions' minds, and then he sees Emrakul. She appears to Jace as the people of Zentnikar depicted her, an angel instead of a monster. Jace asks her why she is here. She speaks of entropy and how it cannot lose. She speaks of things being wrong, of how the soil was not receptive and it is not yet her time. Jace demands she explain what she means, and she responds by making a chessboard. She suggests they play, and if he wins, she will explain. So Jace plays, and plays well. Soon, he is close to winning, but his pieces turn on each other and attack themselves. Jace calls her out for using the pieces that did not belong to her, but she explains that all the pieces are hers, and she no longer wants to play. And then Jace returns to reality. He is back in Thraben. All seems hopeless. Emrakul cannot be killed. But then, Tamio reminds Jace that Emrakul can be bound. The Hell Vault may be gone, but the moon from which it came looms over the city. Tamio takes out a scroll and prepares the spell while Nissa gathers the mana from the ley lines. They struggle to cast the spell, but there's not enough mana. Then, Tamio takes out another scroll and she reads it. 
It is one of her most powerful scrolls that she has promised she will never use. Jace feels the incredible amount of mana pouring into the spell. Suddenly, a bright moonbeam shines on Emberkrul, and she is sucked into the moon. The battle is won, and Innistrad is saved. Liliana turns to the Gatewatch, who have saved her. She decides that they are more useful than they appear, and perhaps worth having at her side. So she takes the oath and joins. Tamio takes Jace aside to tell him something. Apparently, when she was reading her first scroll, Emberkrul entered her mind and took control. It was Emberkrul who opened the second scroll, and Emberkrul who trapped herself in the moon. Tamio is very disturbed, and wonders what Emberkrul's true purpose really is. And that's it for Eldritch Moon. The story of the Gatewatch will continue in Kaladesh. I've been Uncle Jeff. Thanks for watching!